All right, so today we're going to be talking about parameters. It's the second part of how we're talking about functions. It's a sub part about functions. Okay, so first off, a little housekeeping. We're going to get rid of Florida. We just no longer need to be using that for this part of the script. And I'm going to also get rid of the private void Florida because it's going to be useless as we go through this. Now you can think of parameters as the requirements for the trip. In order to go on that trip to the function, you have to have parameters in place. For instance, if we're trying to simply print out the answer to a math question, let's say void addition, right? Let's just make that something that simple. And we don't want this function to only do two separate things of numbers. Like if for instance, we did uh, print one plus two, equals and then we wrote in three here you know that that answer works and sh sure but we can't plug in any numbers what if we want some numbers some variables to go in here so that we can use the same function multiple times because really the point of a function is to save us time in the long run it's meant to make some code reusable this thing to go visit multiple parts of our code can go and visit this destination it's just not meant for one person one family or else we would just make this code in the one spot that we're coming from no this is meant so that we can do it multiple times so let's go ahead and follow through with this. Let's go ahead and make it so that it can take in some parameters. And by taking in parameters, we'll have access to some variables that we can use inside of this code. So if we go ahead and make the int, let's say like first number, we can name this whatever we want. It's a variable, just like any other variable. And we separate it with a comma. And then we can make another parameter. You can make as many or as little parameters as you want. You've already seen that we've done one version of this without any parameters at all. So obviously we can do this. So obviously we can do this in different ways. We can do this without any parameters at all or an infinite number of parameters, as many as we want to put in there. I've seen as many as 20 something parameters, although I personally feel like it's a bad practice, but you can go up that high if you want. There's nothing stopping you. The compiler allows it and the compiler is what makes the rules. So let's go ahead and delete this. And for your challenge right now, why don't you go ahead and make it so this equation works? Make it so that it prints out the first number plus the second number equals and then give us the answer. Go ahead and try that now. All right, so first challenge today, we're just gonna simply put in first number and then we're gonna say plus and we're gonna put in a little thing like this so that we can actually just have the quotes and the plus sign with the spaces around it. Put another plus and this will add in the other part of the string, put in second number plus and then we're gonna put the equal sign right there and then we'll just simply have the first number plus the second number, right? If you remember from an early part of this uh, whole tutorial series, if we go through here, you're going to see string operator, string operator. But if we go all the way down here, you still see string operator. It's not actually adding in those numbers. But if we put some parentheses around these two things right here, it encapsulates them together. Once the compiler hits this first parentheses, it kind of works just like the order of operations does in math. The system goes, oh, I need to do this and take care of this parentheses before I go and do this before I take care of anything else. And so it goes into here and goes, okay, we're gonna do an int and an int, and th that makes it an int operator instead of a string operator, making it so that it actually does addition with this instead of just putting the two numbers together. Because if we don't have those parentheses, it'll just simply print out whatever these two numbers are put together as if they're one bigger number. And let's actually show you what that bug looks like at first. So, Let's save it like that and just show it to you. Although I showed it to you guys in an earlier video, just in case you don't remember, it's been months. So we're gonna go ahead and write addition into here. We're gonna write, let's say five and 29 or something like that. So five and 29. We're gonna go to Unity and just gonna go ahead and run it if I get the right window. And we have five plus 29 equals 529. Again, because it's just taking those two strings together and putting them together as if they're just one string. But if we put the parentheses around them, then it turns into an int operator instead if we hover over it. And we go ahead and go back into Unity. It's gonna completely mess up my computer. And then I'm gonna hit the play button and we're gonna go ahead and get the answer 34 instead and now works correctly. So as you can see, if I go ahead and get rid of these numbers inside of here, what happens? 
Well, addition goes completely blank on there and it no longer functions correctly. It will no longer work. It gives me the red squiggly lines and it simply goes, there is no argument given that corresponds to the required formal parameter first number of that function right there. So you can see we have a problem here. It will not work unless we bring in these parameters. This is the required luggage that go on this trip. These are the tickets, the airplane ticket and the ticket to your resort or whatever you want to call it to go on the vacation to land addition. So in order to come here to this function, you must bring this. The compiler will not allow you to come visit unless you bring these parameters. Okay. So let's go ahead and show you what you can do about this. Like what if somebody wants to do something a little bit more, well, epic than this. Let's say they want to do 14, 17, and 23. Again, we get the red squiggly line. It doesn't work. It will not work. But if I go void addition, I make a second function. I say int first number, int second number, and int third number. And then we can just copy this, paste it, and we'll go ahead and just write in the plus sign right here, like we did before. We'll use the uh, string operator one more time, and we'll write in the third number here. And then we put another plus sign there. And then we had to simply add the third number to this, right? So now we have this whole other function inside of here. And if we go over to here now, you'll see that rest quickly line goes away. It knows to use this function. And what's crazy about this is if we blank this whole thing out, and I start up the parentheses sign, you'll see this one of two pop up. We can see what our options are for the functions. And you see it gives us the names of those parameters to kind of show us what we're using on there. In other words, if whenever you've actually used Unity before, if you've used it outside of the series and you've seen these different options, it's because they have multiple options with the same function name and the compiler's just kind of showing you what the options are. So let's go ahead and make it 12 plus 13 plus 14 or something like that. You know, nothing, no big deal. And it'll now run just like it did before, choosing the correct function inside of there and printing out the correct information. Boom, no problem, right? Okay, so that's parameters inside of a nutshell. That's how you can get multiple versions of the same function and how you can use it with the compiler. That's really all you need to know. You can use any kind of variable inside of here. You can require any kind of luggage you want. You can use a Boolean or strings or anything else that we've talked about previously. So let's go into the challenge now. It's time for you guys to actually do something yourselves. So for the challenge this time, what I want you guys to do is I want you to make uh, multiple pizza making functions. It can just be named make pizza or whatever you want to call it. I don't care about the name. Just make sure that the multiple functions have the same name. And for the first function, I want you to just simply ask for a topping and then you can just write in baking pizza with that topping on there for the printed line. And then for the second function, I want you to have a Boolean on there that lets you put in whether or not you're baking it lightly or not. And if it's false, then you're gonna make it so that the making pizza line says baking pizza with, with topping, just like it did inside the first function. But if Boolean baking lightly is true, then I want you to actually print in baking pizza lightly with this topping. And then you can just kind of do it like that. So go ahead and make those two functions and do that on there. All right, so I'm just gonna call my function void bake pizza. Notice this common practice that we do. When we're making function names, we capitalize the first letter of each word on there. So we're gonna make some parameters on here and we're gonna just simply make a string topping like so. And then as I said before, we're gonna print, we're gonna write in baking pizza with, and we'll just simply write in the topping right here. Now we can do void bake pizza and we're going to make a second version of that string topping boolean is baked lightly and is is kind of like a normal way to start your boolean names you don't necessarily have to do it that way it's really up to you guys there's a lot of different practices that a lot of different people do don't get so caught up in that just learn how the compiler works and then you can adapt to different working situations Okay, and now we need to use an if else statement. Now you got might have gotten stuck here. You might have just completely forgot about if else's and stuff, like additionals in general. And if you did get stuck here, you didn't get past this point, go ahead and try to do that now. Go ahead and try to finish this now. Pause the video, try to finish it. Okay, so if you want to say is baked lightly, 
then you're going to actually want to print something different than usual. You're going to just say, uh, baking pizza lightly with plus the topping, right? Else, else, so in other words, if this is false, then it's going to print something else entirely. If it's going to print with this baked pizza size. And as I said before, ideally, you want to like save yourself work by using functions. So ironically, you can actually write baked pizza and then you can just go ahead and put the topping in here from this and check that out. That will actually work. We're going to actually use baked pizza, this baked pizza right here, this function that's different from us. And because it only takes in that one function, we're going to take this topping from here and just write this out and use this print line that we already have. So yes, you can use a function within a function, even if it's named the same thing as the function, even if it's this function within itself, it's called recursion when you do it within, within the same function. But that's a advanced topic that we're not going to be talking about inside this video. Just want to give you guys a name in case you're curious. Now let's actually run this. Let's actually uh, make it so we bake some pizzas. Let's do one with a uh, pep pepperonis. I don't know how to spell it. So I guess that's how we're going to do it. Big pizza, and we're gonna say uh, sausage, and we're gonna actually put true for this one. So we're gonna bake it lightly when we have sausage, and then we're gonna do another one, big pizza. Let's say, I don't know, ham maybe? I, I like meat, if you guys can't tell. And we'll do false for this one. Let's see how it all works. Well, I put in an update. So let's cut this out and put it back into start instead, <laughs> and then let's try that. All right, let's go ahead back into Unity, go to our console, bake pizza with pep, bake pizza lightly with sausage and bake pizza with ham. There we go. Super simple. We've got it so that functions work correctly now. I hope that you learned something from this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I have a coffee account inside of the description below if you wish to support this channel and buy me a coffee. It's in no way required though. I'm very, very, very appreciative of your time. So much so that I really argue with myself about whether or not to put that coffee link inside of my descriptions. Please leave a comment, hit that like button, the subscribe button if you want more tutorials and general videos about game development because it's what I do on this channel. And well, just thank you. Have a good day. Bye.